Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco and well, I'm here at this cool place. It's in Dusseldorf. First time ever. Welcome to Provine. This is my first time here at this, at this trade show, or the trade fair as they call it. Uh, pretty overwhelmed. I'm in Hall 17 right now for day one. This is day one coverage um, and this place is massive like just this hall is massive. I walked through three other halls this morning on the way to the press center. That was pretty cool. Um, you may have been seeing some of my, uh, my interviews earlier this week. I was in the Mosul and the Naha. They don't say Nahe, because I've been pronouncing it. Nah, Nah, or Naha. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed those. I have another interview that should be before this episode also with uh, Ali Pasqua. Uh, I'm actually recording that today, a little bit later. Um, so yeah, check it out. I'm gonna have lots of cool stuff going on, uh, doing lots of tasting. There's no way I can hit every single thing in three days. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to make some, make some tasting appointments. I've got some other things to do. I'm gonna try to take as much video coverage of it as possible. Uh, take, do as many interviews, short little five, 10 minute interviews as possible. And um, let's have fun. All right, so I just had a wonderful tasting with um, Hopler from Austria. And uh, spent a lot of time there. Went probably spent way too much time, but they were so so nice, hospitable, and we tasted through the vast majority of their wines. Now I'm heading over to a champagne tasting, and uh, I got to figure out where I'm going. Uh, so there's a champagne tasting I'm heading to. I was supposed to be eating lunch right now, um, but I only have like a few minutes to get there, so I'm gonna try to hit a. Uh, there's a food park here. I'm gonna to try to get some food here. Um, so yeah, and um, hopefully, hopefully I'm gonna go back there and talk to them about um, their wines and actually get them on video. Uh, really sad because we sat there for quite a while and everything they talked about was so amazing. And I should have set all this up, but I didn't. So hopefully I'll do that here uh, tomorrow or the next day. All right, so I just left the uh, Comité Champagne uh, press conference. And unfortunately, I didn't find out till way, way too late that um, I could have gotten a little translator headset because they did the entire thing in French. Unless you asked the question in English, then they spoke in English. So I took a ton of pictures of everything. Um, maybe I'll do like a video, try to summarize what they were trying to point out. But basically they're saying 18 is a really great year. Um, their, uh, their volume was up, they had a bumper crop and they, uh, uh, sales are up. That's that's the upshot of it. Anyway, uh, there was a ton of people hanging around the tables for champagne tasting. I tasted only one, the Laurent Perrier uh, Rosé, uh, just because I really wanted to try it. Um, I just didn't feel like standing around <laughs> trying to try everything else, you know, because I'll just try it all at the hall because they'll have it all there anyway. So heading back over to uh, the halls I was in earlier. So that's uh, Austria, Greece, and then Italy, and then I forgot where else. Oh, I'll be on my little thing back here. Um, sorry. Where's 15? Oh, just the rest of Europe. So I got Europe, Italy, Austria, Greece. Um, I have an Austria appointment. Should be an interview, hopefully. And then um, some other stuff. All right, folks, I'm with Hannes. Jordan. No, no, Hiller Jordan. Hiller Jordan, yeah. Hiller Jordan. Um, <laughs> can you see it? Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, and uh, so we're going to do a really quick little like uh, interview here. We're going to learn about the winery and drink like a uh, uh, taste of wine here real quick. Uh, he was gave me a little uh, brief overview of some stuff and we tasted a few wines, some really nice stuff. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you. So I'm just going to talk about 
who you are and how a little bit off the winery. I'll do. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure. Yes. Nice to nice to meet you at Pro Wine. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> it's your first year. My first year. Yeah, yeah. I'm a virgin. It's our <laughs> it's, it's our tenth. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and it's my tenth year on the podcast. So <laughs> good good coincidence. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Uh, the uh, Jordan Wine Estate. Uh, we're based in Austria in the Weinviertel, which is the biggest wine growing region in Austria. And the winery is actually run by my wife, uh, Simone, but she's pregnant, so she cannot be here today. Well, congratulations. Eh? Thank you. Yeah. And we focus mainly on Grüner Veltliner and Zweigelt, uh, which are which are our main varieties. Grüner Veltliner, typical for Austria. Uh, I think most of the people know Grüner Veltliner. Spicy, uh, fruity, fresh, white wine, easy drinking, perfect for summery occasions. And Zweigelt, uh, fully bodied red wine um, with lots of fruit, uh, cherry uh, fruit and uh, a wine for light red wines, but also for heavy ones. Mm -hmm. Our winery was founded in uh, 1858. So my wife runs it in the fourth generation now. And uh, normally the wine fiddler is a very wide, white wine centric region, but there are certain red wine islands and we have one of them. So uh, my, my, um, my wife, she likes, really likes the Zweigelt and we have the perfect soil and the perfect microclimate for it uh, to let it grow very, very well. And to be honest, uh, climate change, it's happening and it's helping the red wines in Austria as well because we get more sun and uh, it's much warmer. It's not so easy for the white wines, but for the red wines, it's, uh, it's ideal. I mean, it's too dry sometimes, but we like it. I'm actually been hearing that. Uh, so I, I visit some wineries here in Germany, and the, the subject of climate change comes up. And as a general rule for them, they feel it's even with the white wines a little bit helpful, just because it's so far north. Uh, you're a couple degrees yeah. farther south, so maybe it affects the white wines a little bit more. So for the for us, the the, the, the typical Grüner Veltliner from Austria is supposed to be a fresh and spicy white wine. And in order to keep that, we need to, to move the, the harvest date a bit forward mm -hmm. and to also harvest a bit uh, more in the night, like in the cooler hours. Okay. And then we can still achieve the, the, the quality, the, the, the style we want to have. Okay. But for the red wines and for the for the more more fully bodied white wines, climate change uh, surely helps. Yeah. I mean, it's not all sunny uh, on the climate change front <laughs> uh, but at least for for some of the wines it helps but in general it's not a good trend it's 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 getting too dry we need the rain with the, the wines we need the rain but uh, at least for some wine styles it, it kind of helps okay um, so you were talking to me about uh, one of the wines that said wine and queen so tell me about tell me what the story behind that is so that's the wine we have in the glass right now yeah it's it's Grüner Veltliner. It's called Simone the First Wine and Queen. Simone is the name of my wife, and she was wine queen of Austria. So uh, she was wine queen of Austria from 2007 to 2009. Okay. And in remembering that, her dad and her they created this wine, which is a very elegant, fully bodied uh, Grüner Veltliner, which we harvest a bit later than our usual Grüner Veltliner which makes it very ripe and, and elegant like a queen. Okay, uh, and what is, we didn't actually go through, so what is the wine queen? What is, what is that title? So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Uh, the wine queen, uh, we have the wine queen, is, it's, we have it in Germany and Austria. Okay. And it's, they are like an ambassador for the wine of the region. Very nice. And uh, they are like elected uh, uh, by a committee. And it's not like a beauty pageant. It's more, you have to know something about the wine and you have to know something about winemaking because for the next two years after you are elected, you are going to a lot of wine fairs, wine parties, wine fests and stuff like that. And you're an ambassador for the Austrian wine worldwide. Okay. So you should be fluent in English. You should be very well fluid in what, how winemaking works and how the wines of Austria work. 
and that's really important. So it's more of an ambassador uh, position. But it's still pretty prestigious yeah. and really a great, great accomplishment, right? It's an accomplishment and it's like a 40 hour work week cramped, On its own, into, yeah. cramped, cramped into one weekend. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it, it, this is going to be a stupidly silly question. So were you the wine king? No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. I, I met my wife after she was wine queen. Oh, okay. Uh, I was working in Munich at the time. Uh, All right. Um, when I got back and we met, I didn't know that she was wine queen. And when I came home and I told my mother that, I, you know, I met a girl and she's a winemaker from this and this uh, village, my mother was like, you met the wine queen? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why your wife really liked you, because you know she, she didn't, yeah, she didn't yeah, know who yeah, she yeah. was on that, right? <laughs> hey man, you know, when, when, you, when you get with a celebrity, and I'm not a celebrity, when you get with a celebrity, you know, or if, if the person just kind of goes, you're just, hey, you're just like everybody else, it's yeah. kind of cool, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I know it's a stupidly silly question, and I, I should have asked that beforehand, but um, so, yeah, so this wine, you said a little more fuller body, you, you um, harvest it a little bit later, yeah. right? Um, and what was the vintage on this one again? It's I don't 2018. Remember. 18, right, so like last year. So this is, um, is this bottled like a sample, like a cast sample? No, for, it's, for it's, it's, it's this already is, bottled. It's ready, yeah. okay. Like in typical in Austria, you bottle the, the Grüner Veltliner, the fresh Grüner Veltliner, you bottle at around January, February. Okay. Because Austrians like the Grüner Veltliner very fresh. Okay. So the, the fresh drinking of white wines is very typical in Austria. So in order to get to the market, you bottle them in January and bring them to market in February. And that's for pro wine, you had, they're already settled. They're already matured in the bottle for one month. So they're like in perfect condition. Okay. Um, and then... So this, uh, on the winemaking side of things, um, what is what do you use for the um, fermentation? And um, I'm assuming since there's no oak, since it's released really quickly, uh, are you using stainless steel, concrete, or anything else? We are, like for this one, it's stainless steel only. Okay. Like fermentation and aging is done in stainless steel. Okay. And we have, uh, since we have a lot of red wines as well, we do some white wines and all the red wines in oak. Mm -hmm. Big oak or small oak. The big oak is uh, Austrian oak from our region, and the small oak is French oak. So we are we like the French oak for our Zweigold uh, reserves. Okay. And we have we have one white wine which is aged, aged in a, or fermented and aged in a 1,000 liter granite barrel. Uh, this yeah, that is, was a cool one. That has the the stone. On yeah, it, it has yeah. a. We we wanted to do something fancy, so we did a, a, a stone label, which is made of real stone, and our name is printed on it. Uh, we didn't know that that's possible, but uh, the guys who do our labeling, we told them about the wine, and we said, just as a joke, I said, let's print it on stone, and the, the graphics guy was like, we can do that now, we can do that now. <laughs> And he ran off and brought us the samples, and they, we, we agreed on, a, on doing something for us. And uh, it was a, it's a nice feel. You have the stone, you have the stone on the, uh, the, the, the minerality on the palate, and it works very well. So, and what, what's the name on that wine? It's Steinzeit, Grüne Wettliner yeah. Steinzeit, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, me being a pro vine, I hear, you hear all these languages, and it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I don't know anything other than English, and then I can read some wine labels. That's about it. Um, and then you had you had um, you had a, another Gruner that was Asian oak that I tried. Yeah, that was a, that was really nice. That's the Gruner Vetlina. It's uh, it's called Gruner Vetlina Reserve Old Wines, mm -hmm. and the wines are 48 years old, and they were uh, planted by my uh, parents-in-law when they were still living in Sin. <laughs> so that was their first project together, and we still harvest from that uh, vineyard okay and um, this is a it's it's uh, 18 600 liter oak barrels which makes it a bit broader on the palate more fully bodied right and you have the a thin layer of like oak on the palate and then you have the spiciness of the Grüner which makes it like a perfect fit but you have to be very careful with oak and Grüner Wettliner you, you do, shouldn't overdo it right yeah and that was really well integrated I really liked what the oak did to that so um, so on this one uh, no oak, all stainless steel. Um, really, really fresh. You know, I get, I get some really nice stone fruit on it. Uh, I also even get a little bit of orange on it. Uh, the acidity is really nice. I mean, for 
for somebody from Texas, this is like a perfect Texas wine in the summer, right? <laughs> um, and uh, you know, you can totally have, uh, you could do totally like salads and fruit and cheeses and you know, I, you could probably pair just about anything with it. Yeah. Some good seafood and, and works very well with Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah, <laughs> which I've had a few of that already. Um, I've never had I've never had some and, and part of it's because I recognize that name on the menus and I really like it but um, I've also had some other uh, regional dishes uh, that have been really nice while I've been in Germany um, I still have yet to go to Austria um, and actually part of my heritage is Austria really? Hungary kind of German a little Dutch supposedly so I do have some heritage you know my I'm an Italian last name um, that's half my family the other okay. half is the rest of most of Europe Anyway. I should come next year to Austria. In June there is a big wine fair. It's called Via Vinum. Yeah. It's uh, it's in the in the palace in Vienna. It's hold there. So it's very nice oh, wow. location and lots of Austrian wine. Oh wow. Lots of Wiener Schnitzel as well. So you know what you need to do? He asked me how I monetize. I said I really don't. There's a <laughs> PayPal button on the website. You you can send money for that. I'll go do that. Um, that I mean there's so many places to go and not enough time and or money to do it um but this this experience has been awesome so um yeah this this wine is this wine is really really nice really refreshing um uh i love the story uh, that's why i said hey can we talk the story so that's why we did this one um can people find you uh i'll have your information yeah, yeah. Um, and are you available? Or can people like make appointments to come come by and visit? Yeah, or? you can you can uh, via email or you can just call us up okay. if you're in the region. Uh, just come by. We most of the time somebody is at the winery. We're okay. a small family-run winery, so we don't have a lot of staff. Right, they can't but, like bring a bus of like 50 people. Yeah, we can handle it. <laughs> we can, like they we, do in Texas and <laughs> California, these buses just show up. We can handle a bus as well, but we need a bit of, of, <laughs> a bit of uh, time. A bit of time for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Hannes, it's, it's pleasure to, to take a little bit of time with me. Uh, Profine is a busy occasion for everybody involved. Um, but uh, thank you so much for taking a little time with me. And um, folks, you need to check out the winery. Uh, if you find it uh, on the shelves or at a restaurant somewhere, whether it's the States or anywhere else in the world, um, you really should check it out. Excellent made wines. Um, if we have some entry levels that are really, really, really nice, up, up to these levels, and um, you should definitely check them out. Uh, all right, folks, so that's going to do it for this segment. Um, I've got another segment coming up. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know who I'm talking to after that. But uh, you have some other segments and recaps, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank Thanks you. so much for coming uh, by. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Pleasure. All right, so my day at the venue is about to come to an end um i'm heading to a hotel uh, i've already alluded to this in uh the interview that i just did with ale so i just finished that up what an incredible interview um what a gracious person spent a lot of time with me um we're gonna have dinner tomorrow night uh inviting me to the winery you know when i when i head out to italy at some point in time so nothing but professional and uh, his wines are amazing so if you see them you should you should get those anyway um uh yeah finishing up here at the venue then i go to the hotel unpack and then i've got a tasting with the vdp tonight um uh, and that's the uh, german quality wine uh group i guess organization so um anyway and i'm also going to kind of show you some stuff here so we're gonna walk around the Italian section a little bit. I mentioned it in the interview, like leave us the Italians have like the best looking call. So here we go. Oh, try it again. So just check out how beautiful all these booths are. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible how they themed everything. I mean, you've got a lot of Got a lot of tables here for people to sit down and enjoy and converse. And, you know, Italians are very social people. Not that other Europeans aren't, but the Italians are very social people. And, you know, they have very big displays. It's just incredible what they did here. And it's a, it's a shame that I didn't get to spend more time here. But I believe on uh, Tuesday, that's going to be a, a day where I can have a little more free time. Uh, because a lot of those places, a lot of the uh, stuff in those halls are not going to be the ones I really, really are concerned about. But 
Yeah, check out the Chianti Classico. I mean, just, it's amazing. All right, so on to the hotel. All right, folks, so that is a wrap on day one. Yeah, I'm in the studio, <laughs> actually in my room. Um, so um, playing around with two microphones, just so you know, I just bought a, um, uh, a new lavalier, um, hoping to uh, work on some of those audio issues that I was having uh, at the trade show, uh, trade fair, as I call it. But anyway, um, so not much really to add about day one. I think uh, you got a good idea of what it was like to um, head out there. Um, like I said, it says some audio issues. Part of it was um, I had something called audio drift. Uh, the the short version is that um, if you don't have things synced properly in your audio settings between camera and audio device that you're using, um, things don't things don't stay in sync. So look it up um, and just you know. Uh, and, and the 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 lavalier mic I'm I'm playing around with I have both of them I have my regular one and I have this cardioid I want to see how the sound is between the two um, though my room is a fairly dead room because I got the green screen going on right now um, and uh, um, so and things are pretty dead in here it's not like in a big big hall I'm gonna do some testing another day on that but uh, the the day that day day one was overwhelming and um, you know looking back. Uh, you know, I just don't know if I realized what I, that I knew what I was getting into. Um, I'd never had done an event like that in my life. Uh, you know, cocktail conference was the closest ever I came, but nowhere near what, what this event is. This is more like a, you know, like a trade show, not really like a conference where you're going to seminars, right? Um, and then like cocktail conference happens to have some tasting and do all that and like, like events at night, but man, Provine, completely different animal. And all these other events are like that. So, um, so yeah, uh, that particular night, you know, it was, it was definitely, um, you know, had a great time at the VDP taste VDP tasting. I don't think I talked about it in, uh, day two's, um, intro. So, um, that was, uh, matter of fact, I just got, um, I haven't taken that out of the wrapper yet. So I just got it like a couple of days ago, but they sent me this awesome book. Um, so it was a VDP tasting and, uh, at this restaurant, had a little nibbles, got to meet some really cool, um, winemakers, uh, from Germany. And, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing, uh, little thing that night. So, uh, yeah, day one was just kind of a matter of just like, whew. um, and, uh, I'll kind of briefly talk about because I episode 449 is going to be the beginner's guide, but I'm going to go a little more in detail about what happened with my lodging. But um, that particular day, um, I did check into a hotel and the, the short story is that um, the Airbnb that I had, um, while the listing wasn't necessarily incorrect, well, maybe not completely incorrect. There were some things about it um, that weren't as good as maybe I thought it was going to be. And what really, what really uh, made me move out of that Airbnb was the bed was literally the most uncomfortable thing I'd ever slept on in my entire life. Um, like I really had a, a genuine concern that I was going to wake up with like back problems um, and then trying to be in my feet, standing around, walking around for eight ish, nine hours, you know, every day. Um, I was like, no. So combine that with they, uh, it, there was flat out lied about the parking. They said it was on free on premise parking when it was actually street parking, um, which in that neighborhood sucked on um, that to, to, not to put it, you know, to put it, whatever, honestly. Um, and then, uh, the bathroom had some issues. There were some issues in the bathroom. Um, but, uh, but basically I was like, I just want to stay in a hotel. Uh, and I'm not really happy about the whole situation with that particular Airbnb because, um, I did get a partial refund, but they refunded me one night instead of three nights, kind of the opposite of why I stayed anyway. Um, so anyway, that's going to do it for this week's episode, uh, day one of Provine. I hope you had a great time watching that. I hope you got an idea of what, what it's like to be at a trade show. Um, so you can click the links above to friend me up at the website. I'll have uh, links below of everything that I was in there that I stop by and I'll also have links of some of the people I tasted with, but I didn't have video of. Um, and so you can check out their websites, um, and do that. And, uh, you can hit the donate button over there and, uh, we'll see everyone in, uh, we'll, oh, and also 
anniversary show is coming up May 20th. Uh, if you're in town and you want to go to it, it is a private event. Uh, it is a ticketed event, $35. But if you want to go and you haven't, you're not friends with me on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, or you just kind of forgot about it, uh, hit me up. I'll send you an invite to it because um, it is a very limited amount of seating, so I can't just make it a general thing. Everybody can show up. Um, so yeah, do that, and we'll see everyone again next time.